right, John. Well, you have to be, I mean, a thrill seeker from a very young age. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of started that way, I think. Yeah, <laughs> and now you have one of the coolest jobs in the world. Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. So tell everybody exactly what you do. Um, I do a lot of things in the air sport world. The, uh, the primary thing I do is I'm the captain of the Red Bull Air Force team, which is an eight-person. Look at, look at y'all. Yeah, we're having fun. That's our office. <laughs> um, yeah, so I run a team of eight athletes that are professional skydivers and base jumpers, and we travel all around the world doing stunts and shows. Um, and in addition to that, I do a lot of stunts for the Hollywood world and a lot of really special kind of dream-fulfilling projects for Red Bull. Okay, so how long, by the way, this, this wing suit jumping that you're like a flying squirrel, right? Gotcha, exactly. Okay, how long, how long ago did that start? Um, well, way before my time, there's a few people trying a version of it, just sewing fabric between their jumpsuits. And that They're not alive, well. right? Yeah, that did not end well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but about 20 years ago, they started kind of revolutionizing the sport and developing the wing suits to be better and better. And in the last decade, it's taken leaps and bounds where we're able to do things like you're seeing now, jumping off cliffs and flying down mountains. So you're really just controlling you, your speed and height and landing with your arms and that suit. Yeah. There, are, there's no brakes like when you're on one of those things. Yeah, with no. the, yeah. the only brake we have is when you pull your parachute. That's something yeah. you can't do in the So you have seats. a parachute on the back. Yeah, you can't land them yet. They're going too fast forward. But, right. But yeah, they're, uh, they're one of the most aerodynamic uh, wings out there. We, uh, you know, gravity is our engine. It's what gives us our speed and our acceleration. And How we fast are you that. going? Uh, we average about 120 miles an hour forward while we're only descending at about 40, 45. Oh uh, but you can change the angle of how you're flying and change those speeds quite dramatically. But Do you ever hit a bird? No, I've hit, I've hit a swarm of bees before. You have? Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> yeah, it was all over my face. Oh, my God. Landed. But, I mean, I wonder what birds think. Of that. Has a bird looked at you trying to catch up with you? Um, under the parachute, yes. I've flown next to birds under my parachute. But in the wingsuit, I think they're just getting out of your way. We make a crazy sound going, yeah, yeah like we're a human missile. So. And, and is there a, a, a point where, I mean, You've always been into this. You haven't been scared. Has there been an instant where you, you almost hit? Because you're close to the side or the bottom, right? The, oh, yeah. A mountain. Yeah, we're a very close proximity. Um, you know, I've, I'm scared a lot, to be honest. It's, it's probably why I'm still here and still doing my job, because being scared kind of keeps you in the right mindset. Um, but at kind of a, a weird story, but at, at a young age in my career, and back in 2001, it was the first time I ever did uh, production movie, um, and my job was to skydive out of a helicopter with snow skis on, though, and then free fall for, you know, we jumped at 12,000 feet, and the idea was to eventually pull a parachute, land on top of this mountain, and ski away. And we shot for like two weeks, and it was, you know, uneventful, no big deal, but um, without getting too technical of how it happened, one of the jumps, I had a malfunction where my parachute and lines wrapped around my skis and my boots and my bindings, and I fell for over 6,000 feet, um, and I couldn't get a, any of the emergency stuff to fire. And I landed on top of a mountain, and I'm not making this up. It was in New Zealand. The mountain's name was Mount Invincible. And I impacted the mountain and went through a lot of like mental things. I never lost consciousness, and I was talking to myself. So I kind of got excited, like, wow, there is an afterlife, because here I am talking to myself. <laughs> Um, but long story short, about a minute of that went by, and the other stunt guy landed next to me, and I woke up and did the whole wiggle my fingers and toes things, and I realized I didn't feel any pain, so I stood up, and I didn't break a single bone, and that was after falling 6,000 feet to impact, so. Was there snow? Did you go into snow? Yeah. Um, yeah, there was a little bit of snow, luckily. It was a so lot of rock. So that's what saved you, is a little bit of snow. Yeah, it was kind but of But 6,000 feet. Yeah, that's How fast would you be going at that if from 6,000 feet? Uh, with the malfunction I was dealing with, everybody that watched it said I was going pretty much free fall speed, so I was about 100 miles an hour. And you didn't break a bone? Didn't break a bone. I kind of feel like I live in a parallel universe now that... <laughs> right. <laughs> well, going. then so do I, because I'm talking to you. Yeah. So I... I <laughs> Welcome. Both of us are in the parallel universe. Um, wow, that's incredible. Yeah. All right, uh, I want to talk to you some more after this, more with John DeVore after this. So you have two daughters. How old are they? Uh, 11 and 13. And they want to do this? 
Um, I don't know. I'm not pushing them to do it. Um, they haven't directly come to me and said, I want to jump out of an airplane, but they're displaying signs of risk already. Like my daughter, we, I organized a fun project on Lake Tahoe, and we had helicopters out in the middle of the lake and took her up in the helicopter and hovered 15, 20 feet in the air, and I told her she could jump if she wanted to. And so she, oh, there you go, yeah. So she climbed out of the helicopter and sent it. So then I was, realized right then that I'm probably in trouble when she gets old enough to jump. Wow. <laughs> When you have a helicopter and saying you can jump, I mean, yeah. she's going <laughs> to... Who wouldn't, right? <laughs> yeah. But, but there is some kind of... There's a difference in your brain than my brain. I mean, the yeah. fact that you... you it, like, thrill seekers have something. There's something different, right? Because you yeah. love that adrenaline rush. Yeah, I do love it. It's what... It kind of, at a young age, what got me into the sport. But then I fell in love with the art of human flight. And much more than the adrenaline rush of what's going on, the freedom of flying my body is what yeah. I really felt. So in love this with. is the suit, right? You got it. That's and and this is so basically you're in this and what's it made out of? Um, it's I mean I, I don't know all the tech behind it, but it's basically just a nylon fabric and it's uh, zero porosity, so the air won't bleed through it. Uh huh. So you have pockets you can carry cash. Yeah, all kinds of cash. <laughs> okay. But yeah, basically you'd, you'd unzip this and you'd climb inside. Right. You can see and these inlets here are on the front and back of the suit. What's that for? And so as soon as you jump off a cliff or out of an airplane, wind rushes into these and it pressurizes the suit. Oh. And then the suit feels almost like a fixed wing. It gets very strong uh -huh. and rigid. And then that turns into our foil that we then fly our bodies with more power than normal in these suits. Wow. Well, I can imagine, look, I can imagine how amazing and quiet, silent that must be. Well, you said it's not silent. It makes a lot of noise when you're flying? Well, stick your head out of a car going about 120 miles an hour, and that's what it sounds like. <laughs> so it's not silent. Um, but it's peaceful. Yeah. yeah. It wouldn't be pe If I was in it, the, my screams would be louder than the sound. Of, <laughs> it would just be me going, ah, 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 ah the whole time. Um, I but, I, but I, I imagine that is a really cool sensation. I just can't yeah. imagine. But I do the, I would do the flying, the machines that you can kind of float Yeah, the indoor in. skydiving, the wind Yeah, tumbles. indoor skydiving. I would do that. Yeah, yeah, Cause, they're amazing. Because you can't get hurt, right? Yeah, I mean, you can always run into the walls in there, but that's hard to do. So. Right, right. <laughs> well, yeah. anyway, it's, it's great talking to you because this is fascinating to me. It's just amazing that you're doing this. Yeah, I love it. I love sharing the passion of the sport, you know, and educating the world on, on what we do for a living. It's yeah. a special thing. Very, very cool. You can watch more of John's skydives and base jumps on redbull.com.